Hi friends! I'm Leah Noel, Aviatrix Stitcher. Thanks for stopping by today to hang out with me while I talk about cross stitching. Um, <clears throat> so last week I told you it was snowing here and we got like a, a over a foot I think and we've also been having some water problems in the whole in the whole area. We live right next to a river and it's very close to flooding and it's just the fall so we're really hoping that the winter is going to be mild enough that there's not a whole lot of snow melt and that it holds off enough so that it dries out a bit um, because otherwise we might be looking at some flooding issues but today it's sunny and it's warm and I feel great because I love the sunshine and I love no snow and warm temperatures so I'm a happy girl um all right the other reason for my video today is because I promised you a giveaway for skeleton crew oh, oh, skeleton crew and um, I'm just gonna do that right now get that out of the way I had about a dozen people interested in it and I am going to use tiny decisions so uh, <laughs> all right so I loaded up everybody's name in there see and we're just gonna go ahead and spin Okay, Jasmine Ravenclaw, who I believe goes by Jen. You are the lucky winner. Uh, congratulations. Um, Jen has been a long time viewer of my videos and I very much enjoy corresponding with you via comments. So I'm, you know, I'm happy to send this to you. Um, if you could, um, well, first of all, if you're on, on Instagram, um, find me there and send me a direct message. Otherwise, um, I can find your comment a little later and put my email address in there and you can just email me with your, uh, with your address and I'll get that out as soon as I can. Hopefully you'll get it by Halloween. You can have a nice Halloween start. So I'm going to close that up. Great. Congratulations. Um, if I don't hear from you in a week, though, I'm going to say by next Thursday, which is the 24th, if I don't hear from Jen by the 24th, I'm going to pick a new name so that I can get it sent out, hopefully, by Halloween. Um, okay, so that was the giveaway, and I actually have one more giveaway coming up. Um, okay, I won't say anything about it, but... I have, I have another giveaway coming up when I talk about um, a little bit of haul and, and planning that I'm, you know, that I'm doing. So I've got another one towards the end. Um, and before I get into my own stitching, I wanted to tell you about two handy things that I found for stitchers. The first thing, um, I actually saw this first on Amy's video, Amy Loves Toads. I don't know, I don't think she had this exact book, but when she showed her book, I immediately went to Amazon and I found something and I purchased it and here it is. It is called Sketch and Stitch. It is, oh, it's by Art of Design. Oh, yeah, I, fo I, I follow her on Instagram. Um, so yes, Sketch and Stitch, it's a book um, that is Oh, it's made in the U.S., South Carolina. It's just blank graph paper. Um, what this is handy for is if you want to rechart um, something, like if you have a chart and you don't like the words, you want to rechart your words, or if you want to modify a design, or if you just want to create your own designs, you know, if you want to start, um, if you want to start drawing your own stuff. Um, I wonder. She probably has. 
she probably has her own store. I think she's got Etsy or something, Artist Design. Anyway, um, I'm going to link this below if this is something that interests you that you think would be super helpful for you. I just found it on Amazon. Um, I think it was 10 bucks on Amazon. And um, I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll look around quick and see if she's got her own website. Um, so I got this. I'm super excited to have that because otherwise I was just like trying to find a free um, cross stitch graph um, picture online and then I would print out the picture and I would use that and this is just going to be just way better and won't use my ink so cool. The other thing I wanted to show you is an inventory app and it works for cross stitch and it's not the cross stitch app. Okay so I, I did purchase um, the XStitch Plus app. Um, this is what it looks like on an, uh, that is what the app looks like, XStitch Plus. And I did, I did get the XStitch Plus, but I, I do not like to use it. It's not super user friendly. Um, and it occurred to me that maybe I should just search for an inventory app and there were several to choose from, but I found one that I really like. It's called iCollect. Now, this is right here. iCollect, that is what it looks like. I'm gonna open it up. And, um, so I have an iPhone. I don't know if this is available for every phone. Um, but anyways, it is, it is an app made especially for collectors of anything. Um, there are a few features that I don't really care for, but they aren't inhibiting to my usage of it. Uh, this is what the homepage looks like. You know what? Let's see. Lower? Is it lower or higher? Yeah, lower. Nope, higher. Okay. <laughs> trying to fix the... Oh no, that's way too light. Okay, sorry. Just trying to show you the screen and it's pointing towards my window so it automatically lights up. Okay, can you see that there's like a list here of things? Okay, stop getting lighter. Okay, there's like a list here of things that you can collect and you can inventory. I think this works super well for movies and I'll show you. I just went ahead and um, inventoried all of our movies and all you have to do is scan the barcode and it just pops up with the information. For cross stitch it's a little more complicated. Um, I made my own okay at the very bottom of these so all these lists come automatically with it um, that that makes me think that um, all of these items might have a barcode thing and information already, um, you know, uploaded for the barcoded items. So um, they don't have something for cross stitch, but I just made my own cross stitch list. And what I did, um, I just, I just had time for a three, but um, they allow you to uh, take a picture of the chart and then you add your own information columns. So what I did is you have the name. Um, I added just a whole bunch of information that I thought would be helpful for me, like designer, stitch count, um, if it comes as a kit or if I have it fully kitted, um, a floss list, start date, finish date, FFO'd, yes or no, um, any project notes so where I could put um, like floss substitutions or the fabric I'm using. Um, theme, gift for or gift from, purchase price, selling price, loaned to. Um, and I put those categories in there mostly because when I was browsing through the other um, items that you can catalog, they had those um, s slots and I just thought, well, that might be interesting, interesting or useful at least for me if I eventually decide to sell any of my stash. Or anything like that so um, so yeah I just think that that's 
it's super easy to use. Um, and once you come up with all of those that all of that category information, whenever you hit, you know, make a new entry, they come up automatically. So you don't have to do it every time. You just have to do it once. So um, what I'm going to do soon is go through everything and just inventory. I know some people use computers to do that, and I think that's fine. But for me, I think it would be more practical to have it on my phone because who doesn't live with their phone these days? Whereas my computer is a desktop and I, I definitely don't live with my desktop. So um, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I'll put the name of the app below in the comments. So if you're interested and if you think that would help you, cool. I have some water today, but look at my awesome skull glass. I'm super into skeletons. Boop, boop, boop. So I was super excited to see this. It is a Halloween item, I guess, but I'm just going to use these year round because skulls. Who doesn't want to drink out of a skull? I mean, pretty great. So with that, I will get to my stitching. Uh, <clears throat> I have worked on several whips in the last week. Um, it's been a good, good stitching week. It's just been a good week all around. I was just so happy when that snow left. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is my snowman stocking. Despite my lack of love for snow, I really am enjoying working on this stocking. And it is going to be um, for my son. And I originally wanted to have this done by this Christmas. But yeah, I won't go into it. But it's not going to happen. Anyway, I made some really good progress. Um, I, I finished up the top hat. So I think last week I also showed this to you. I didn't ha quite have the top hat done. But now I have the top hat completely done. And I wanted to get all of these, um, all of this dark stitching all around it. Because that serves as sort of a border. And I want to start back stitching as I go. So I wanted to make sure that all of my stitches around the back stitching were were done so that you know I can just pick up the and do the back stitching. Um, these are birds, and I have a feeling that they're gonna look a lot more like birds when I have the back stitching in them, because look, they just they don't really look much like much of anything. This one's all this one's missing is a beak but there's just like hardly any definition at all. Um, here is where his broom is gonna be, and um, so I, since you saw this last week, I finished up the top hat, I put in all of this um, outside stitching, and I did this whole branch with the bird, and I think I worked a little bit in here, um, and I think that's it. So I'm excited to be working on this again. I, I, um, I just, I got, I just got so sick of it um, after last winter. It was just so harsh, and I couldn't stand it. So, can't help it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is what I'm calling purple geisha. It is a Joan Elliott design from the Oriental. Odyssey cross stitch book. Um, I do not like the word oriental, so I am calling her Purple Geisha. This is what she looks like. I finally got wise and put in a, a page tab so I could find it uh, for my floss tube videos. I don't stitch out of the book, I have a working copy. Um, you know what? I will actually tell you though that the the pattern, um, I'll show you some of the pattern. I'm going to show you some of the pattern. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> here's the key. And this is the colored pattern. And it is nice that it's colored, but I wish that every square also had a symbol in the middle because... Um, some of these colors um, don't have a symbol 
in the box and they use very similar colors like the yellow. Um, there are there are just multiple let's see six I don't know if you are gonna be able to see this at all. Let me get really close here. Ooh. Okay, look, this box and this box. Um, those colors are showing pretty true um, on the camera, and you can imagine they neither of them have symbols on the inside of the box, so when I come across one of those, I really have to guess sometimes like which one it is and just use logic, and that sort of slows down the stitching process. So um, that's my only complaint about this Joan Elliott design, and the whole book uses similar style um, charting, so, uh, I imagine also that if people are colorblind, it would be difficult to stitch from because that is, there is no other chart to go from. So, anyway, um, this, here is my progress, and I am stitching this on Midnight Fabric by Luminous Fiber Arts. Um, she periodically has this for sale in her Etsy store and I love it. It is one of my favorite fabrics ever. It's just such a gorgeous color. It's not quite black. Um, it's very blue, but it's like a... I mean, Midnight is really an appropriate name for it because it, it does remind me of just a nice, so like partially cloudy midnight night midnight night midnight evening anyway since you have seen this last which was a long long time ago because I have not been stitching on this very much um I added an internal um ring here and then I started doing the wisteria because I want to get to her face um, that is a method that Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, sorry, Stitching Mommy, um, does with all of her ladies that she stitches, and I, I just really like that method because if you, if you stitch her face right away, then you can hang out with her when you're stitching her, like, you know, like she's there, so anyway, I'm, I'm working, I'm working up there. Um, I am also not going to stitch the background in this, so, um, let me show you one more time. The background in this gold, um, I'm not stitching this lavender, or a periwinkle, I should say. It's more of a periwinkle. Okay. This is so cumbersome. I'm not stitching that background. I'm just going to leave it open because... Um, who doesn't want to see more of that fabric? Right. So I think it'll be good. Anyway, um, this is a gift for my youngest sister, um, and it's going to take me forever. So, but she knows that. I'm working on this on even months, and I'm trying, I'm going to try my darndest to pull out this one and my other sister's project at least once on, you know, the corresponding months, you know, e odd or even. So this is my even month project, and yeah, I was glad to bring it out. Okay, then I picked up another um, design called Jumpin' Jack Frost, and this is by Tempting Tangles. Um, I think, <laughs> I think Tempting Tangles designs are just so charming. I, I just really like them. Uh, I am changing some of the colors, but not all of them. Actually, well, I'm keeping a lot of the oranges, but I've changed all the greens. I've changed the purple, uh, yeah, the purples. Um, I'm keeping the yellows, and I'm keeping most of the oranges, so, um, 
since you have since you saw this last I worked on mostly the pumpkin I finished off his little shoe and I started on the pumpkin um I made a I made a counting error and I had to remove um so here where this orange was I had this all filled in here with orange but it was off by a lot it was not fudgeable so I just decided to take it all out and it was like really painful because altogether I think I took out four full strands of floss but I was able to salvage it I just picked it out I didn't I didn't rip you know I didn't I didn't use my seam ripper I just picked it out and saved my fancy floss um so anyway yeah I'm really enjoying how this is coming along you hopefully will see this at least one more time because I do want to finish my hanging threads. I've got I've got two hanging threads here. Um, next to the pumpkin is a big leaf pile, so um, I've got some yellow here waiting to do some leaves, and then I just want to work this hanging thread in before I put them away again. But I just really I really enjoy this project. I really like it. It's on twenty eight count and. Nowadays, I'm using mostly 32 count, uh, so I think partially why I had the counting error is because I'm so used to seeing the space, you know, the the physical space of a 32 count stitch and, and counting from that. So on the 28 count, just the stitches are a lot bigger than I think I expect them to be, so uh, I think it was just an easy mistake. It's inevitable, everyone. Everyone has counting errors now and then. Oh, speaking of counting errors, here's another one coming up. Um, autumn knotting. I'll pick this up again. This is a sal that I am doing with my friend Christina. Uh, she's on Instagram. Pins. Oh my gosh. Pins and pins and needles. Pins. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm blanking on your Instagram name. Petals and pins. Okay, sorry. I talk to her, like, at least weekly. Sometimes daily we talk on Instagram, so. Anyway, um. I made some pretty good progress on this. Okay, I have it folded weird. I made some pretty good progress on this. Um, but. I came down here and I was gonna do the trunk and I was gonna go all the way down and then I thought no I'll go over this way so I can start to get to these leaves and right around here I missed an entire uh, row of this you know this side trunk so everything I stitched here and here is off it's all off it's all off um but I think I might fudge it. I'm going to try to fudge it. I am going to try to fudge it. It's going to be a little tricky because there's so much going on in that corner. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get all of this in. Like, look how dense those colors are. Um, it's not full coverage, you know, but it's still like, okay. I might have to take out... Ah. I don't even know what I'm going to do. So I've put this down since I discovered that counting error because I don't have the heart to take out all these stitches and I think I will actually take out these stitches just these um, because I know that this is the end of my string so if I just take out that much um, that'll be like one string take out one one length of floss and it'll be a little bit easier and then the other thing I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna put in a basting stitch um, to show myself, to remind myself where the mistakes are so that I don't count from my mistake again. Uh, so that's coming up. And then I still haven't figured out all of the flosses that I'm using for that, but that's okay. That I have time to do that. Um, okay, the next one I worked on was Violet's Blue. I was motivated to finish the house because I didn't have very much left to do. I just had one shutter, the chimneys, and finish off the roof. And then I also um, went ahead and finished the other side of the hill. And then I also started on the words. So 
here is here's my progress um I'll be honest with you I do not love it um I had a problem with uh the the floss colors not being what I expected and and then I thought, like, originally I thought, well, I, I'm just going to go with it because this is what it's called for and who cares anyways, like, it's just going to be fine. And so I stitched the whole thing and it just really bothers me. And <clears throat> the last time we talked about this, um, I had some suggestions to outline, not outline, to backstitch the shutters so that they stand out a little more. Uh, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to use a color that wasn't already in the sampler. So I thought the best, the best... Um, color to use would maybe be this lighter it's a medium purple from the heart and I use that around the shutter but I don't really like how it makes the shutter pop out when nothing else is popping out except for I just I'm not a huge I just don't I didn't like it um, so I didn't do the rest and <clears throat> I went to Instagram and I posted a picture and I just asked for some advice, you know, what people thought. It seems like it's probably just a matter of personal preference. Um, a lot of people like this uh, because it looks kind of antique -y. and I am not really an antique -y person so I don't, I don't love the antique -y look um, of this house. I don't love how muddy it looks, um, how all the colors are just kind of blending in together. And I was trying to come. I was trying to compare it to the the model on the cover, and I think it does look really similar to the model. So what I'm going to do is, I love the model. Like I just the moment I saw this, I I immediately went on a search and I found it and I bought it. Like I didn't even think about it, which usually it takes me forever to think about things, but. I just love this so much that I just decided to go for it as it was and to buy all of the called for threads and to do it exactly as it is, which is also rare for me. So, um, I'm going to continue stitching the rest without, um, without making any changes right now. I was thinking about getting a darker pink, um, or stitching over the existing pink uh, or um, I, I don't know I, I'm considering several things and so what I ultimately I'm going to do is to just stitch the rest and see how I feel after all of the violets are stitched because the violets really are the main show right I just I love purple purple is my favorite color and you don't see a whole lot of purple uh, in stitching so I'm just gonna do those and maybe by the time those are done I won't notice the house as much or it won't bother me as much or I'll grow to like it who knows uh, meanwhile one shutter is backstitched and I'm I'm considering just leaving it uh, because I recently I read a book about um, samplers, old samplers, and how little girls were doing their samplers, and they're just full of errors because it seems like they just, their motto was to keep stitching no matter what, even if they had a mistake and the rest of the piece was just stunningly gorgeous, you know, they still had some errors in there and they just left them for some reason. So, I don't know. I'm considering embracing, <laughs> this is a sampler, so I'm just considering embracing the imperfection and maybe that'll help me to like the the house colors a little bit more who knows we'll just have to see the last thing I stitched on I'm sorry I need a, I need a little drink I feel like I'm pretty chatty today it's already been half an hour okay the last thing I stitched on is Be My Love. Um, it's an awesome travel project. It just, it's on Ada. I'm stitching this on Ada. Um, on 16 count 
Icon Ada by Picture This Plus. And I didn't get a whole lot stitched, but I did start um, filling in the leaves here. I think, I think all of the leaves might be done now. Outlined, I mean. So now all I have to do is go in and fill them all in with the greens. And I still do not care for the color of these birds. I think they need to be lighter or it's just too close to the color of his shirt. So I do plan to redo those birds. And there's another bird here and I'm just not going to stitch him because I want to change the color of those birds. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm just, I, I just really love having such an easy to work on project around which is maybe partially why I'm not super motivated to sit here and just stitch, stitch, stitch until it's done because I, I just like keeping it around. It's just really sweet and easy. After this one is done, I'm just gonna have to make sure that I always have an easy Ada project. My stocking is on Ada, but that is totally not easy to travel with. It's not easy, so. All right. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I had a question on my last video about my grand guards, and I'm really sorry that I don't always tell you what I'm working with. If you have a question, definitely put it in the comments and I will answer it. Um, so someone had asked me about these grand guards, um, and they come from an Etsy store. Um, it's Margaret Lee Needle Arts, and I'll put her shop below in case you are interested. Um, it seems like she's got a fabric for everybody. Um, I don't know, in my opinion, there's a whole lot of fabrics that she uses that I would never really want, but I love um, this, this fabric. I got, um, I got a handful of them. This, is, this one also comes from her shop. This one is a batik. I think that's how you say it, batik fabric and that's like my favorite kind of fabric and this one is just a cotton something or other <laughs> fabrics like quilting fabrics are not my wheelhouse so I don't I don't really know all of them but anyway I know this is like a cotton fabric and I just really like it it's sturdy and they're a good size and you'll see I'll show you on this one I'll show you on both um I've got some extra fabric in here that I just tuck in and it's still, it's still wide enough that mostly, most of it just gets tucked in. Um, and then the same with this one. This is the eight inch and I've got all my extra fabric shoved in here. Yep. So let me know if you have questions about any of, any of the things that I'm using. I'll gladly tell you where I got them and probably give you a link so you can get one too. Okay, now I have some haul to show you. Um, I, I've been pretty good about not buying stuff lately, but I went through this phase recently where I just decided that I wanted to stitch gifts for everybody like a whole bunch of people and so a lot of my haul is just the aftermath I guess of finding something that I want to stitch for somebody and then getting friends to uh, you know like pattern friends for my patterns um okay I'll just get to it so first thing I've had my eye on this meal hook kit forever, um, and what I didn't know is that this is a magnet. It comes with um, comes with all the floss, comes with all the beads, and it comes with a magnet and um, comes with the paper. I planned on just stitching this on fabric, but I actually like that it's going to be a magnet. So I think I'll probably uh, stitch this on the paper for myself first, and then I was gonna stitch like one for every family member because we're we come from a farming family um 
and I think my whole family would really just like this. And it's pretty cool if it's going to be a magnet. So, got that. Um, okay, and then, oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, so here's another pattern that um, reminds me of my childhood. And I thought perhaps this might be something that I could stitch for my dad. My dad is really just kind of a, um, he's a handyman. So gifts, he's not really a gifts person either. So gifts, I think, are just hard for for us to get him anything because if he can't use it then he just doesn't know what to do with it and he's not really a lover of art or anything so um anyway I just thought maybe if I stitch him an ornament because I don't think he has a whole lot of ornaments that are just his you know Christmas ornaments so I thought I would do this and I'm gonna stitch one for myself and I'm also gonna stitch one for a childhood friend uh, because we used to go sledding at her farmhouse down the road she had just these awesome big rolling hills and we would take a bobsled legit bobsled and me her and her little brother would all go down and sled, you know go sledding on her hills and so I thought I'll stitch it th I'll stitch this three times ideally one for me one for my dad and one for my childhood friend who I haven't talked to since, I don't know, high school graduation, like 16 years ago. Crazy. Um, but that's okay. And childhood friends, I think if I got a gift in the mail from a childhood friend that I hadn't talked to in 16 years, I'd be like, oh my gosh, that is awesome. So I'm just going to do it. I got one sled. Um, thinking that I would do that, but then I had a eureka moment and I thought I could put other designs on this little sled and so I decided I'm gonna stitch something for my grandma and hopefully hopefully I can do it this Christmas by this Christmas we'll see but I had I've had my eye on this um, drawn thread pattern for a long long time because they are just cute little smalls and they would be super easy to just make for people right in an ideal world like you could just sit down and make something for somebody um so i think i'm gonna do this one for my grandma she is a bird lover loves birds feeds all the birds has so many birds her and my grandpa um like that was one of their shared hobbies is they just they loved to feed the birds together and my grandpa would get more into the bird watching he'd have all the you know bird books and whatever and and my grandma does too a little bit um she still references the bird books and everything but she just she's more of the um caretaker of all of their wild birds so anyway i just thought this would be a good one to put on a sled and i could give that to her and she can use it either as an ornament or as a something to put on a shelf somewhere you know knickknacky thing so i gotta start that soon okay another gift um i saw this little house needleworks night and day um I am going to stitch this for my friend who just recently had a second baby and I'm going to change these two words night and day to the names of her children and they're gonna fit perfectly in there so yes and I think she's gonna like it so um, you'll notice that this is in a uh, what's it called sheet protector I really dislike uh, patterns that come on just regular printed paper and are all folded because I know just from experience that when you keep folding up paper like that, like regular paper, you get um, the ink wears off. So what I started doing very recently is putting things in sheet protectors. and. I'm just gonna have the binder with all my patterns and it'll be great and organized and it'll be it'll be great 
And then, let me see, I think this is the last gift purchase that I that I got that I'll tell you about. So, um, we, every summer, well, not every summer, um, this summer we tried a farm share from a new farmer in the area and really enjoyed it, loved the produce, and really loved the farmers. The um, It's a husband and wife team that does the farm share. And I thought... Um, I thought it might be nice to, to make them a little gift, um, by next growing season. So I've got, a, a good deal of time to finish this, but, um, this is To Grow a Garden by Lila Stabile. And, um, I just think that they're gonna like it. They live in an old farmhouse and, and they... They had a, they hosted a, like a thank you luncheon for all of their farm share um, subscribers, and we got to see their house and their their gardens and everything. And just based on their interior decor, I think that they will appreciate something like this. So there's another thing to do. Um, and then because. Nothing can travel alone. Everyone needs friends in the envelope. Um, I'll show you. Um, so I've talked about Lila's studio, Lila's studio before, and how I can never decide what design to get from her because I love them all. So I got two that were at the top of my list. Um, one is this snowman garden. I think is adorable, and I think I have fabric. No, I know I have fabric that will work very nicely for this. So I got that. And then I got this, Alphabet Sampler number two, because actually I prefer Alphabet Sampler number one, but when I was browsing her Etsy store, uh, I noticed that you can no longer get it. And the only difference is that instead of this second alphabet, um, she basically cuts it off here, and then down here she's got like a, a different border. On the bottom so I thought either I'll just I'll just eyeball the border that I like or I'll just stitch this or I can use these letters like individually for different things but anyway those are I'm just I'm just like rambling about maybe future plans potentially okay I also got the filigram, uh, what is this called? Blackberry plant. Um, and I put it in a, I put it in a sheet protector. So I got that for myself. Um, okay, I had to laugh because uh, a while ago I was watching Misty Purcell and she purchased this, and she said she thought she saw it on my channel uh, first, like. She saw it on my channel and she had to go out and get it because she thought it was so cute. And I said, Misty, that's hilarious because it's been on my wish list forever, but I don't actually own it. So Amy Loves Toads also has this um, pattern as well as the other three. And Misty got this one and at least one of the other ones. I don't know if she got all three. Um, I thought about getting two. I thought about getting the cranberry one in addition to this one. But realistically, I think... I'll just stitch this one. I won't stitch the other ones. Um, that's my, those are my last words. <clears throat> so I have this now. We can all start it together next year or sometime in the future. So if you want to, in the future, stitch that with us, like at least start it with us. I don't know when. I, I don't know when. Maybe next year. Maybe. Okay, the other thing I got for myself. Drawn Thread Give Thanks. I've been looking at this forever. Forever. And I just thought, why, why not just buy this now? And I think I'm going to start this, like, soonish. Because I love it so, 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 so much. Um, I don't love the colors. I'm going to change the colors. 
So that's Drone Thread. Give thanks. And um, so since I thought maybe I would start it like soonish, I, um, I browsed the fabrics and I decided I would maybe try one of two fabrics. And I thought, why not just get them both? They're, they're just the smaller sizes and I know I can make use of both of them, so I did. And I'll show them to you now because the second one is not exactly the color that I thought. But this is 40 count Wren. Um, new, it's a Newcastle 40 count linen by Picture This Plus. And um, I think this one is probably the one I'll go with. It's um, just nice and it's a it's a nice neutral. It's a little bit browner than I would maybe choose if I had more options in person, but I do like it. And I've used Ren before, and I liked stitching on it. It's just an easy it's an easy color to stitch on, and I think it'll accentuate the colors that I'm going with. Um, the other one that I got is called. I think it's called Tycho, 40 Count Tycho by Picture This Plus. And this is, um, yeah, super washed out. Okay, that's probably, that's probably a good representation there. Um, it looks a little bit, uh, okay. I don't wanna, dis I don't wanna be, okay. It looks a little yellowish. Um, it looks like, it looks like, um, there are yellow splotches, but also there's like a very light, uh, greenish blue underhue to it, um, like an undertone. It's hard to describe, but it's, it's, um, it's puzzling. Like, I can't quite, I can't quite put my finger on it but this will come in handy for something else I'm sure I'm positive but I'm not going to use it for give things and then I thought well while I'm at it why don't I get this gorgeous looking uh, Cyprium it's a 32 count Cyprium Belfast linen um, I just needed the teeny tiniest cut that they would get um and I thought I thought I would get this maybe for the um, the the man and the little girl walking that I showed I don't know if it was a couple times ago um, I'm not going to use it for that now that I have it in person I don't like this as much um, the color on the color swatch on the website is much 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 oranger um, I don't know if you can see this like rosy orange this is what the whole swatch look like on on the website but in reality this is very very brown it's like a it's like a greenish brown almost um or like an orange it's like it's like if they mixed green and orange together I think that's probably what they did to get this brown anyway I I don't care for it as much as I I like the picture but I think this is probably going to come in handy for some other kind of fall, um, you know, fall themed design later. So I'm happy to have it in my stash at least. And it was just the the smallest cut, the eight by twelve, those little sample sizes. I love those sample sizes. Um. <clears throat> okay, and then the last thing that I got that I will show you, I got from the kitten stitcher. She did a Halloween sale where you could get one Halloween item one Halloween item for 20% off and You know, I don't I don't super care for Halloween But I thought I would go and look at her site anyway, and she had fabrics um, She had fabrics labeled as Halloween So I went ahead and bought my very first x design fabric This is a 36 count witches brew 36 count is not my go-to but it is all that they had in this color. So I went ahead and got a little piece. And it's purple. It's purple. So, and that color is showing up really nicely. So then you can see kind of what the variegation looks like. 
so I was really happy about that. But um, I couldn't stop myself there. I also got some 32 count farm eggs and farm eggs by XG Design is exclusive to Kit Stitcher's shop. So I thought, well, let's just go ahead and get this. I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love this. I love it. I love it. Um, and it's kind of a bigger piece because I have some ideas for this fabric. Um, I don't have the patterns yet, but you know those um, cot cotton, oh shoot, what are they called? You know the Songbird series, Cottage something? Cottage something. The Songbird series. Cottage. Oh, shoot. Okay, anyway. You know the Songbird series? Um, there's like 12 of them, and um, the first one that they ever released was the two cardinals, and the tiny little house, and the, and the wreath, and it was two dogwoods, uh, two dogwood flowers, and um, you know that Songbird series? So there's four that I think... I really want to stitch. I don't have the patterns yet and I have no idea when I will ever stitch it uh, because because of everything that I've been showing you. But I just thought this would possibly be a good fabric to do all four of the ones that I like on this fabric. And I really enjoy 32 count. Um, it's the most comfortable for me to stitch on. Um, I think it goes the fastest for me. Although I am I, I like all counts, really. I like 28, I like... I can do 36. There are not every pattern. I don't think I can stitch every pattern on 36 count. But, um, and 40 count, I'm liking 40 count more and more. So anyway, so I got those two fabrics, and um, they're X2 Design. This is my very first time purchasing X2 Design fabrics. I have to say, they were very smelly very 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 smelly the scent was overwhelming I thought it this has to have been doused in some kind of perfume and I don't care for the scent I know some people love the scent I've seen it on other people's videos where they just they smell it. they're like oh it smells so good but they don't describe the scent it's very perfumey it's kind of musty musty smelling and um, it's just drives me crazy. So I tried putting it in the freezer. Um, that was something that my friend Katie, uh, Notes from the Trail, had suggested to me is uh, putting it in the freezer. That worked a little bit, um, but they still are very smelly. So today, um, I've, I had them outside this morning because I said it was all sunny. It's very sunny, slightly breezy. It's perfect for airing out fabric. So I'm going to do that um, for a few more hours here today, and hopefully that will take care of it, but I don't know. Um, I need to get rid of the scent before I can stitch on it. So if you have any suggestions um, as to how to get rid of scented fabric on hand-dyed fabric, I don't want to wash it necessarily with... I don't, I don't know that I want to wash it because I would be afraid to ruin the the fabric if I do that but yeah if you can if you can tell me your favorite way to get rid of scented fabric I think if anyone suffers from migraines uh, if if they're very sensitive to scents uh, if scents will trigger a migraine this would definitely be a trigger for that um so anyway that aside I love the fabric I I love the fabric, how it looks. Um, it's great. And it's surged. It, uh, actually, no, it's not all surged. I think when I think when Teresa cuts it up, she 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 gets big, you know, yards. She must get a big yard or something that's already surged, and then she cuts to order, so um, it's partially surged. Okay. This is the last thing I got from Kitchen Kitten Stitcher. Um, I've had my eye on this forever, and recently 123 Stitch got rid of the listing. It was, it was sitting on my wish list forever, and then I noticed that it was just 
not even available. It didn't go on sale, didn't go on clearance or anything. It just was no longer there one day. And I thought, oh no, because it's by Blackbird Designs. So they they regularly retire some designs and I think they did retire this. So when I saw it on Kitten Stitcher's website, it said new, uh, re-released, yeah, re-released. And I thought, okay, it's now or never, I'm just gonna have to buy this. So I have this now. I can stitch it after I'm done with my other octopus design. So now I've got two octopus things to stitch. And then, um, you know, Kitten Stitcher is so generous all the time. Every time you order something from her, she sends a little goodie in, in, the, um, in the package. And um, this was a Halloween special, so she sent this freebie. Um, it is a primitive, it's the Primitive Needle Moon Witch, and it's very cute. I actually happen to love this bat. I love this bat. I would just stitch the bat, but I don't know when I would do that. Anyway, I'm not into Halloween. I'm not, super not into witches, so if anyone would like this, um, I would be happy to send this out to somebody. Uh, so if you, um, if you would like to receive this from me, um, just tell me that you would like to stitch the witch or just use the word witch and then I'll know that you want to, you want to stitch this. Don't say giveaway. Um, I have the giveaway, I have the word giveaway filtered so that if you say the word giveaway, your comment doesn't even show up and we do that to um to not make the giveaways searchable for people who are just looking for free things we just want to send it to other stitchers so please don't say giveaway just say witch i would like to stitch the witch <laughs> stitch the witch um yeah this is it's just a free it's a free chart I don't even know it might be on it might be online but if you're like me and you like having a hard copy um, this is a really nice tag board it's printed on tag board um, yeah I would be happy to to send this mail this out to whoever you can be anywhere in the world I'll send it to you mm, I think that's it yeah, I think that's it. So, um, you'll see me again in a week because um, this. Tell me, tell me if you want this by next Thursday, the twenty fourth, October twenty fourth. Um, that way, I can send it out to you, and you can have it by Halloween. Um. That's it. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I really, I don't have anything else. So I hope everyone is doing awesome. You'll see me in a week because I will tell you who won this, um, this uh, chart, this little chart. And if I don't hear from Jen uh, by next week, I will also pick a new name. So you will definitely see me in about a week, probably on Friday. Um, yeah, until then, leave me a comment. Let me know that you stopped by. I love hearing from you. I love interacting with you via comments. Um, find me on Instagram. I'm very active there. Um, and I will put all the inf information below. That's it. Take care, everyone. <laughs>